The greatest story ever told. Presented by the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Tonight we present The Figure at the Door, a drama based on a teaching from the greatest life ever lived. In the town of Gabara in Galilee, two men stand watch a safe distance away from a great house. Their eyes are fixed on the door of that house, and suddenly it is opened. A face peers out, and then the door is shut instantly. One of the two watching men says to the other, There, Malachi. You see? Yes, sir. It was Simeon's servant who opened the door and peered out. Exactly. And did you notice how furtively it was done? Yes, I noticed that. Good. That was all I wanted. Someone else to watch and see and confirm my feeling about this thing. Now come. We shall go back to the marketplace. Yes, Come along. Sir. sir, if I might ask, why did you take me from my work to have me stand there and watch Simeon's house with you? Because I had to make sure. Now that I am sure, the whole thing is quite clear to me. What thing? You couldn't figure it out, could you? But I have. What, sir? It occurred to me almost two weeks ago. That's the day the caravan arrived from Egypt. Usually, Simeon would be down there in the marketplace trying to buy the best of everything, bidding against me. But he wasn't. I mocked that fact. Then I began watching and thinking. I haven't seen Simeon since then. Have you? No, sir. Well, then I asked myself, why? Why has he never seen any more? You know as well as I that Simeon is the kind of man who likes to strut in public, who likes to appear in better garments than those I wear. It's true, he's vain. True, too, that he vies with you for public attention and favor. Well, but... that makes the mystery all the more baffling. Why should such a man not appear in public for two whole weeks? Perhaps he's ill, sir. Then why should his illness be kept a secret? Unless my good friend Simeon has fallen victim to leprosy. What? Yes, Malachi, I'm sure of it. I'm sure Simeon is a victim of leprosy and is hiding in his own home, cared for by his own loyal servant, so no one else will discover it. If it's true, it's too bad, sir. Too bad. I don't know about that. Sir, what do you mean? Well, once and for all, it will settle the question of who is the leading citizen in this town. Once this is known, he'll be forced to leave here and wander the roads like all the other lepers. And then only one man will be spoken of as great... Here in Gabara. That will be me. Sir, might I suggest... Quiet, Malachi. Let me think. Now, we can do something about Simeon. We can tell the town authorities. They'd drag him out. They'd expel him from the town. Yes. I'll talk to them. Please, sir, don't do it. And why not? In the first place, it might not be true. And in the second place, if it is true then Simeon needs help, not expulsion from the town. You would say that. Too soft. That's your trouble, Malachi. At least promise me not to do it for several days. Several days? Why? What difference would it make? Sir, the thing I mention now may not seem connected with this, but it is. And I was going to speak to you about it today in any event, so now is a good time. Good time for what? Ethan... Could you advance to me some of the money I shall earn in the next few weeks? An advance of money? You, Malachi? I've never heard you ask for that before. No, sir. I'm an old man. I live alone. My needs are simple. But this time I do need money, Of so... course you shall have it, Malachi. Oh, thank you, sir. But wait. You've aroused my curiosity. Why do you need it? 
But, sir, the master will be coming here to Gabara again. It is the first time in a long time. And it would be the greatest moment of my life should he and his apostles deign to come to my house to have the evening meal, even spend the night. Truly nothing could ever happen to me that would be greater than that. I see. Well, I can't tell me. This master, he seems to be gaining in popularity all the time, doesn't he? If you're trying to say, sir, that more people follow his way, yes, they do. Hmm. That's a thought. A very interesting thought. Sir? Nothing, Malachi. Nothing for you to worry about. I shall have the money, though. Yes, you shall have the money. Tomorrow. Remind me of it tomorrow, Malachi. Sir, Ethan. Huh? Oh, Malachi. Well, what is it this time? Something you've come across in the marketplace? No, sir. Just that the day is almost over and you've said nothing about what we talked of yesterday. Oh, you mean the money? Yes, sir. The way you've been wrapped in thought all day, I don't wonder you forgot. Is something troubling you, sir? Malachi, do you believe in dreams? Dreams? Oh, what do you mean? Do I believe? Can a dream mean anything? Oh, I know there are stories in the scriptures about dreams, Pharaoh's dreams, others. But could a dream of great meaning happen to me? Could it? Who knows where dreams come from? But the meaning of a dream. How does one determine that? I don't know. It was the strangest kind of dream. I was in my home. It was night. I was alone. Then there came a knock on the door. I went to answer. I called out. Enter. And the door opened? No. The door didn't open. Suddenly, I could see through the door, as though it had become transparent. There stood a man there, in a long robe, covered with dust, as though he'd traveled far. I could see him, but he couldn't see me, and I could see his face clearly. It was a kind face, with deep and gentle eyes. Then I saw him knock on the door again. Again, I called out to him, enter. But he looked at the door, and then began to walk away slowly, sorrowfully. What could such a dream mean? I, I don't know, sir. I've had dreams that come and are forgotten with the light of day. But this one, it troubled me, awoke me, had been with me all day. Well, it's no worry of yours. Now then, what were you asking? The advance of money, Ethan. Oh, oh, yes. Tell me, Malachi, would you insist on having the master at your home? Insist? Oh, of course not. I could only invite him to share what I have. One doesn't insist, not with him. I didn't mean that. I mean, suppose you didn't invite him. Oh, but I must. I'm an old man. I may not be here the next time the master comes to Kabara. So that I must invite him this time, else it may never be. If it was a matter of doing him honor, it could be arranged in another way. How, oh, sir? Suppose that there were a great feast in my house, and the master and the apostles you spoke of were invited there. You would be there, too. You could honor him in that way. You would invite the master to your house? Why not? Think how it would enhance my standing in this town, now that he has come to be accepted by so many. <laughs> you know, I'll even invite Simeon. Perhaps when he fails to appear, it will cause others to ask the same question I asked. Perhaps that's a way of bringing his condition to light without even saying a word to anyone. Please, sir, you don't understand. One doesn't act in that fashion toward the master. Malachi, I shall invite the master. I shall have a huge feast. Everyone will be there. You too. No, sir. Malachi. I couldn't be there. I couldn't be witness to what you propose to do. I see. You realize, of course, that the advance of money you requested will not be forthcoming. I realize that now. 
However, I will not withdraw my invitation. You are still welcome to pay honor to the master at my house. At the great feast. I understand, sir. Ethan, is there anything else you wish to have done about the feast? Ethan? Oh, what is it, my dear? I was talking about the feast, but it seems you have something else on your mind. No, 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 it's nothing. Ethan, last night as you slept, did you dream? What makes you ask that, Ruth? You called out. Not once, but several times. I... I called out? Yes, dear. You kept calling, enter, come in, the door is open. Such things as that. First you spoke softly, then your calls became angry and finally frantic. Uh, I see. If there's something troubling you, you could tell me. Oh, it's only a dream. I've had it once before. It means nothing. Surely if it meant nothing, it wouldn't have disturbed you so. I tell you, it means nothing. Now, the final plans for the feast. A food there must be plenty. More than enough to satisfy everyone who will be here. And did you dispatch the servant to extend a special invitation to Simeon? Yes, but I wondered. Ethan, why do you invite Simeon this time? Ordinarily, you don't like to have him here. I don't understand. Because I invite him doesn't mean he'll be here. As a matter of fact, that might be just the reason I did invite him. That's a very curious thing. Ah, you see, it works even with you. Right now, this moment, you're wondering why Simeon won't be here even though I invited him. Admit it, you are. Yes. Now tell me what this is all about. You'll find out in time, my dear, in time. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. And now about the seating arrangements for the feast. Simeon shall have a place of honor close by the master. After all, the more people's eyes dwell on the empty seat, the more their minds will question why Simeon isn't here. So remember, Simeon's place shall be one on the side of the master, and I will sit on the other. Who could that... Oh, wait, I know. I dispatched a boy to the town gate to wait till the master and his friends arrived. Must be the boy. Come in, come in. Well, Reuben, did you see him? Did you... Who is this man with you, Reuben? Sir, he is one of the master's closest friends. I asked him to come with me to hear the invitation from you yourself. His name, sir, is Peter. Peter, eh? Welcome to my house. Ethan is my name. God be with you, Ethan. Now, what was it this very excited lad tried to tell me? He was so excited I could almost see his heart pounding in his chest. It's good you came. You can see for yourself that this is one of the finest homes in Gabara. Perhaps then my invitation will mean more to you. I should like to invite your master and all his apostles to feast with me here this evening and to spend the night. It's very kind of you to invite us, sir. Wandering the country as we do, we have a high regard for warm and friendly hospitality. Ethan's house is open to all who need shelter. Thank you. Now I must go. But wait. I must have an answer from you. I shall take your invitation to the master. Have no fear of that. Then he will be here. I can only take your message to him. He shall decide. I see. Now, may I leave? Of course. Strange man. I don't know if I like him. But why? He seemed a kind man with a good, strong, honest face. Oh, it wasn't his face, it was his bearing, his attitude. I don't know. You expected that he'd bow and scrape and show you great respect for having invited the master here. Is that it? Now, Ruth, don't judge me. Just do as I say. Preparations will go forward. Even though you've had no answer yet? The master will be here. They'll all be here. Where else in this town could they be so well fed? The feast will be held. And they will be here. <laughs> Yes, David, you and your wife must enjoy this evening. That's why I invited you here. It must be an evening to remember. Of course, Ethan. That's right. Mingle with all the guests till the guest of honor arrives. I'll see you later. Ruth. Yes, dear. Have you been to the front door again? Yes, Ethan. No sign of the master? No sign of any of his followers? No, Ethan. Not even that one, Peter? None of them. I can't understand it. It's late. 
even past the hour when I'd expected that the feast would begin. I can tell from looking at their faces that even the guests are beginning to sense there's something wrong. Perhaps he isn't coming, Ethan. He'll be here. He must. Maybe... Maybe there's something wrong with the door. What are you saying, Ethan? I must go and see. Go and see? Come with Ethan, me to you... the door. You may think me mad, but it could happen. What could happen? Come and see. Yes, dear. Ethan, I'm looking at the door. What's wrong with it? I must open it to show you. Here. Well, Ethan, what's wrong? How different is the door now than it's ever been before? I... I don't know. Ethan, what is it? You're pale and fearful? I don't know if I to tell you. If you can tell anyone, it should be me. Yes. Yes, dear. Last night, the same dream again. The man knocking. I bidding him to enter, and he didn't. Again, I could see him through the door as though it were transparent. And I could see him disappear. Yet last night, the dream was different. After he had gone, I went to the door. I opened it. And I found that the latch on the outside of our door was gone. Not there at all. Gone? Yes. It was as though there never had been a latch on the door. What a strange thing to dream. That's why. Well, I thought... Oh, it can't have anything to do with it. The latch is there. The other guests found it. It's foolish, very foolish. Except... Yes, dear? In the dream, after I discovered the latch was missing from the outside of the door, I ran out. I followed the figure down the street. I called to him. I asked him to return. And he turned to me and said something and walked on. What did he say? What's the trouble? I can't remember. I just can't remember. Well, uh, we might as well go back into the main hall and wait with our guests. But if the master doesn't arrive... He must arrive. We'll wait. <laughs> The way everyone looks and whispers. It's long past mealtime. They know there's something wrong. Yes. The master won't be here. You must admit that now. Yes, I'm afraid so. It would have been so perfect. The master here and Simi are not here. If that had happened, then even Malachi would have appreciated what I wanted to do. As a matter... Wait. Malachi. What of Malachi? He isn't here, is he? No. But then would you invite a mere clerk to such a feast? I did invite him this time. And he isn't here. Nor is the master here. Wait, wait. This thing is beginning to make sense to me at last. Ruth, I'm going out. Leave a house full of guests, a great feast waiting to be served? How can you? I'm going out. I think I know where this master is. And if he is there, then Malachi will pay for this little bit of treachery. Yes, he'll pay. Please, Ethan, just because your pride is hurt, don't do anything to Malachi. He was your father's clerk and friend even before you were born. That doesn't give him the privilege of making a fool of me. I'm going to find out if my suspicions are true. And if they are, Malachi will suffer for this. Yes, friend, who... Ethan! Yes, Malachi, it's me. Why, Ethan, what are you doing here? Don't pretend you don't know. Let me in. Oh, no, Ethan, I'm afraid I can't do that. The master is here and he teaches. I shouldn't want a man as angry as you are to burst in at such a moment. Then he is here, just as I thought. Despite the fact that you knew I wanted him to feast at my house, you invited him here. That's the strange part, Ethan. I didn't invite him. You didn't invite him, yet he's here? How do you explain that? He came to me. He asked to eat here, to spend the night here. And I suppose you spread a lavish feast for him, quite by chance, too. Feast? We had only bread and some milk. But the master seemed quite satisfied with such a little. He came here of his own choice to eat bread and milk, when he knew I had a great feast prepared for him. I don't believe it. I give you my word. Malachi, I think you lie. Ethan, please. And not only do I think so, but I shall accuse you to your own friend, the master. I shall tell him what kind of treacherous man you Ethan, are. Ethan, you're making a great mistake. Stand aside, Please, Malachi. Ethan, no. Don't go in there. Don't do it. Please, Ethan. Master. Master, I must talk to you. Sir, please. 
Master's in the midst of teaching. Pew, Peter, I recognize you, even if you don't remember me. I'm the man who invited the master to a feast at my house. I remember. But he wasn't there. He chose this place, sir. So I understand. And I want to know why. The master is not called upon to explain his actions to anyone, save to a power greater than any on this earth. Perhaps you don't think so, but I do. Master, I don't know which one you are. I've never seen you before. But they say you prize very highly truth and virtue and honesty and faith. Yet you have chosen to come here to the house of a man who is dishonest in preference to coming to my house. Ethan, you shouldn't have said that. You lied to me only a moment ago, standing there at the door. But I didn't lie. I said the master asked to come here, and he did. That's right, he did. I know that, Ethan. I don't believe it. Not unless I hear it from the master. Which one is he that I may ask him for myself? There, Ethan. There is the master. Well, then, master, I... I... No. Ethan, what is it? No, it can't be. It can't be. Ethan, you look faint. You tremble, so what is it? You wouldn't believe me. No one would. What is it, man? No, Peter. No, Malachi, it can't be. Please, Ethan, what is it? Oh, let go of me. Let me out of here. Let me go. Ethan, wait. Ethan, Ethan, wait. Please. That's right. Wait for me. Well, Malachi... What do you want of me? Oh, Ethan, I'm, I'm glad you waited. I couldn't let you go feeling as you did. Well, I'm convinced the master chose to come to your house without invitation. I know that now. Is that what made you turn pale and tremble? Made you run from my house like a guilty man? Was it so obvious? Yes, Ethan. Now, tell me. Why? Those dreams I had... The figure at the door. The figure that knocked and wouldn't enter when I invited him. That figure was the master. I knew it when I saw his face this evening. Oh. And as I looked upon the master's face, the words spoken to me in the dream all came back suddenly. I heard them as clearly as I heard them in my dream. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will eat with him, and he with me. That's what I heard in my dream. And he was the figure. I see. Malachi. There was more. In the dream, there was no handle on the outside of my door. Why? Can you tell me, Malachi? I'm beginning to understand. In the dream, it was a door. But in your own self, it is your heart. Just as in the dream, the door could only be opened from within because there was no latch on the outside. So your heart cannot admit the master unless you open it to him from within yourself. The latch to a man's heart is within him. Yes. Now I know what the dream meant to tell me. I'm just not worthy. Not worthy at all. Good night, Malachi. No, wait. wait. You yourself said it's something which must come from within a man. And I've failed that way. No man has failed till he gives up. You're not lost. What can I do? How can I open my heart to the master? By goodwill toward the master. And toward others. By overcoming hatred. By forgiving. By living a good life. In keeping with his word. I see. I only threw wide the doors of my great house to him. I tried to tempt him with lavish foods. 
But he chose to eat bread and milk in your house, where there is kindness and goodwill and a benevolent spirit. He chose well, Malachi. I'm not worthy. I only meant to enhance my prestige by the master's presence. I meant, too, to do harm to Simeon. And in spite of that, you say I'm not lost? No, Ethan. There's still time and still a chance to change. You really think so? Yes. How? Some act, some good deed, some... Wait. I know. Yes, Ethan. Has something occurred to you? If I could bring myself to do it... You mean Simeon? Yes. You said yourself it's help that he needs, not expulsion from the town. Well, I could bring him to your house, to the master. He'd find help there. That's right, Ethan. But you know how I've always hated Simeon. Then isn't this the best time to open your soul from within to Simeon and to the master as well? Isn't it, Ethan? Yes, Malachi. Yes. Though it would be difficult for me to do it, I will. I shall go to Simeon's house now and bring him back. The master shall cure him. And me, too. You see, the door to my heart is beginning to open already. Yes, with his words. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. have been listening to The Figure at the Door, another episode in the greatest story ever told from the greatest life ever lived. The greatest story ever told was a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.